What's up? It's Michael here with Bear Coast Dallas Real Estate. I'm a real estate agent here in the Dallas, Texas area. Every Monday, I give you an update covering all of Dallas County. We're looking for trends, which cities and zip codes are the hottest if you're a seller, which cities and zip codes are the coolest if you're a buyer looking for a deal. But before we jump in, I'd appreciate it so much if you could hit the thumbs up button and I'm up to 20 subscribers. So if you wanna be the 21st subscriber, please leave a comment below saying I'm the 21st subscriber so that I can know who you are. And if somebody wants to be the 22nd subscriber, you also can comment, and then that would probably make this my most commented on video ever. So today is Monday, March 20th, and probably the biggest news of the week was it's the end of March and we had a freeze last week. I had to bring all of my cacti into the garage. Otherwise, they would die if you didn't know. Okay, first thing we're gonna look at here is interest rates. We've spent pretty much the entire last week fluctuating between six and a half to 6.75-ish. Today we're at a 6.62, so nothing significant there from last week. Next, we're gonna look at mortgage purchase applications. We always wanna track that because that's our best leading indicator of how much demand is coming in. So we can know when applications are going up, we can expect those sales to show 30 to 60 days from now. So when rates started going up at the beginning of March and they got up near 7%, mortgage applications went way down for several weeks, but this week we had a 7% increase in mortgage applications as well as last week we had another 7% increase. So the last two weeks we're at 14%, Although, as you can see here, we are still down 38% year over year, but we're trending back upwards. So this is gonna be a good thing to watch to see how much demand is gonna be coming into the spring market. All right, moving on to the overall picture of Dallas County. So this is something you need to familiarize yourself with if you're gonna watch my videos. This is the Market Action Index, and it's just this box. This is an easy graphic that covers all of this real-time data over here on the right and just puts it in a, in a simple image that just says how much of a seller's market is it. If we ever get past this 30 line, then we'll be in a buyer's market because historically only about 30% of the time are we in a buyer's market. So the better way to represent this at this time is just how much of a seller's market are we in. So as you can see, median list price held pretty much just dead on. And all of these lines are 90 day moving averages. If some of them I track with a weekly number, but otherwise the line gets too jumpy up and down. So if I'm showing you a weekly, I'll tell you that. Otherwise assume it's a 90 day moving average, which makes it just much easier to spot trends instead of like one sporadic week. So we can see, Price is holding strong. Price per square foot though in all of Dallas County is trending up. Days on market, we always go with median days because average, you always have those houses that have been sitting on the market for a year that just skew the whole thing up. So we like to take median. It's more accurate when there's outliers like that. But as you can see, median has definitely been trending down for a lot of weeks. We're down to 42 days on market is the median. Another very clear trend is the number of houses having price decreases is definitely dropping. Again, all of this is pointing to it being more of a seller's market this month than it was last month, which is this great line. Another thing to note is 35% of houses having price decreases in a given week, that's totally normal in any normal market. So I know a lot of people have this feeling that there's a ton of huge price drops happening, but it's not actually being reflected in the data, which is why we always look at the data. Inventory has been dropping for a while. I'd say it's pretty flat right now. I wouldn't call that an increase but definitely something to watch if it does start curving up. That would be huge if inventory could start getting up. That would make it a much healthier market. I don't usually discuss rents, but it's definitely interesting that they're on their way back up. So this is the market action index, and this is what we're gonna cover, and this is what we use to take a quick look at every city and zip code. So here's the data we're looking at. I know it's overwhelming, so let me explain. These top three boxes, this is just to tell us which cities, which zip codes are the hottest. That means they have the highest number of that market action index, which means you're best off selling there, you're gonna get top dollar there. It's an incredible seller's market in these places. These two are the monthly averages. The last one, as you can tell how squiggly it is, is the weekly. So you rely least on this one and most on these two when looking for trends. This one is really just more exciting to see which was the hottest market specifically this week. It may have been terrible the last 10 weeks, but this week it was the hottest. That's all this is showing you. This is more just for excitement. Really what we wanna look at for trends is these two boxes. So starting over here, Louisville, Texas. This one for a long time has been the hottest seller's market. It is so difficult to get a house there. If you're a seller in here, you're still in the best spot of all of Dallas County. Coming up next is Grapevine. Grapevine, all these three, Grapevine, Louisville and Carrollton are pretty similar markets, as you can see reflected here. They're pretty desirable, not a ton of inventory. Right below those would be Irving, Texas, and you'd be surprised. There are some really nice neighborhoods in Irving. If you never venture over there, it might be worth taking a look. Up next, Capel, Richardson, Saxe, Rowlett, and Garland. So in Dallas County, if you're a buyer, most difficult cities to get in, and if you're a seller, these are the hottest markets. This is where you're gonna get top dollar. So to break it down even further, we move on to the specific zip codes. So again, this is the 90-day 
day average for where is the hottest zip code. Not surprising, as Louisville is the hottest city, the hottest two zip codes are both in Louisville. So if you're living in Louisville, congratulations, you're doing great. Next would be 75063 in Irving, 75007 in Carrollton, 75010 in Carrollton, 76051 in Grapevine, another one in Irving, 75062, then out of nowhere, Balch Springs, 75180, and then Richardson, Texas, 75080. That's actually where I live, one of my favorite places in the world. If you're looking for a house, I definitely recommend 75080. And then Richardson, 75082. So if you're a seller and you live in one of these zip codes, you are doing better than all of Dallas County. So feel free to sell your house in this zip code and go to one of the ones we're about to cover. But real quickly, let's just move over to this. It's just the excitement factor. Don't put too much stock in this but the 75224 zip code was the hottest zip code this week, followed by Rowlett, 75089. This is actually a zip code I grew up in. Then Louisville, Carrollton, then here's my zip code, 75080 again, 75. Irving, Richardson, Garland, that one's definitely an outlier. Garland is not represented anywhere else, but they have one zip code that is pretty hot right now, and it's 69, at least for this week. And then another Dallas, 75232, and then another Rowlett. So that's the summary for the hottest seller's markets in all of Dallas County. If if you live in one of these, great for you. And if you're a buyer looking in one of these, have this mindset going in. You're going into one of the most difficult markets, so just have that expectation. Moving on, this is all of that same data except the opposite. This is where the markets are the slowest, so where there's the best buy opportunity. So city-wise, we're starting out with Ferris, Texas, and this is like a really small town. It's kind of a, a skewed picture because everything there is new builds. So it looks like there's a great buy opportunity, and I guess there is, but it's all just big new build planned communities. There's not a lot of price drops going on or anything. They really just have a lot of homes sitting there, which makes it a buyer's market, but you have to buy it at the price they want. They're just kind of waiting for the demand to come in as the city fills up. Seagaville, we covered a little bit of this last week. And in last week's video, I did a way longer, much more in-depth of a lot of these places of where you can get a deal right now and what the neighborhoods are like. And I did some pictures so you can see exactly what's in these zip codes. So if you're interested in that, I'll put the link somewhere. I hope I've never done that before, but I hope it pops up right now if you want to see a much more detailed version of these cities and zip codes. Up next to Seagaville, it's probably about 20 minutes from Dallas. Let's click on Seagaville, see what we can see. Yeah, so Seagaville last month was almost a buyer's market. I think this is probably one of the lowest, but as you can see, it's already jumped up the following month all the way up to 40. A lot of people buy rentals in here. There's a lot of stuff in the mid 200s. Uh, it says here the median price is 328, but at least a lot of what I've sold is more like in the mid 200s over there. But as you can see, the median prices are trending up. Days on market are starting to trend down. Price decreases are trending down. Inventory is trending down. And the market action index is starting to climb up. So if you're looking for a buy opportunity, this may actually be a good one for now. Next would be Lancaster. And then sort of surprisingly, next would be Dallas. And I say sort of surprising because Dallas is huge. So there are a lot of zip codes where things are slower, which we'll see in the next box. So this isn't really representative of the whole thing. But I just also want to note, remember 30 is a buyer's market. So 33 is significant, 39 is significant. Once we start getting up to 46 and up, that's still pretty firmly a seller's market. Even though in Dallas County, these are the softest cities, they're still very much seller's markets. So just very quickly, Red Oak, Wiley, Mesquite, Cedar Hill, Duncanville, and Grand Prairie, those are the next softest markets. But again, once we're up to almost 55, that's very strong seller's market. Next box is that same thing, but specifically with zip codes. So where are these softest zip codes? And I'll just let you look over these, 75125, just to see if you live in these or if any of these are near you if any of these interest you. 75218 is an interesting one in Dallas. Same with 208. And again, these two are both 90-day moving averages, so much more of where you can see a visible trend, whereas this next box is just specifically this week. Where was the absolute slowest, softest, coolest market this week? So just look in case you live or have been looking in one of these zip codes. 75231 was the absolute softest. Remember from zero to 100 with Currently, the hottest seller's markets are like in a 70, and this was at a 13. This one at a 14, 16. So you can see a lot of these Dallas zip codes are very soft, which then leads to the overall picture making it one of the softest cities in Dallas County. But again, it's huge. It has a ton of zip codes, so it doesn't take much to pull it down in that middle ground. There are still a ton of Dallas neighborhoods that are very strong. Here's one in Richardson, Lancaster, Duncanville, and then two more in Dallas. So I'll just give you a minute to look through all of those numbers, see if any of them are relevant to you. And then the very last thing we're gonna cover is just inventory. And I just threw this on here so that you can always have a quick visual of where's where inventory going. It's obviously dropping. 
it definitely looks like we had a top here and we've been trending down. Historically, inventory bottoms out in January, maybe a little bit into February, but ever since COVID, the market has changed entirely and we actually are bottoming out closer to March, April. So here we are at the end of March and we're still dropping for the season. So for this year, we still haven't found our bottom of inventory. I'm expecting it's gonna come this month or next month because that's what's happened since COVID. So you can just look at this weekly and see, are we trending down, are we trending up? Of course, again, this is a 90 day average. So even when we do start turning, it may take a couple weeks to reflect that, but look for it to come sometime in April to start turning up, hopefully. Obviously this depends a ton on what rates do. As we can see in all this data reflected, buyers are super interest rate sensitive. If rates go up a half a percent, 1% demand just dries up, but the second they come back, it comes flooding back in. So it 100% just depends on at what point interest rates drop or at least if they stop going up. Well, that's it for me, guys. I genuinely hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you could please give me a thumbs up, that would be great. And hopefully at least one of you has subscribed by now and commented below that you're my 21st subscriber. And if not, maybe you'll get me in the next one. But have a great week and I'll see you next Monday.